The next step in the communist strategy is the most easily recognized, for it consists of the tactic of getting masses into motion, and thus precipitating mob violence. Master psychologists that they are, the communists know that once the masses are in the streets, it's not too difficult to convert an orderly demonstration into a full-scale riot. They know, too, that when rioting occurs, police and military forces of the government must move to restore law and order, and thus they have the first visible signs of revolution. Riots, demonstrations, street battles, detachments of a revolutionary army, such are the stages in the development of the popular uprising. The official constitution and program of the Communist Party stated in 1921, The Communist Party will educate and organize the working masses for mass strikes and mass demonstrations. It is through struggles that the working masses are prepared for the final conflict for power. As these strikes grow in number and intensity, they acquire political character through unavoidable collision and open combat with the capitalistic state. Mass action culminates in insurrection and civil war. In 1964, a communist document taken from the Viet Cong stated, Get the people out into the streets. Quarrels should be provoked. Youth groups are to be armed with knives and clubs, allegedly to protect themselves in the manufactured tension. In China, as in all countries, the communist appeal was aimed primarily at students, young, idealistic intellectuals, most of whom came from wealthy families who could afford to send them to school. It was from this group that the young communist recruits came who later provided the leadership and backbone for the armed conflict to follow. In Cuba, leftist-oriented students were the vanguard of the organized street demonstrations. Once the masses were in motion, that tenuous line between demonstration and riot, between non-violence and violence, was easily obliterated. As law enforcement officers sought to restore order, police brutality became the cry of the insurgents. Algeria was more of the same. Rallies, demonstrations, marches, and the inevitable flare of violence. The invariable charges of police brutality were hurled as efforts were made to maintain law and order. When marches and demonstrations turn into riots in any country slated for takeover, the communists are then ready to implement the final stage of their blueprint for conquest. It takes only a handful of armed opportunists, criminals and savages, to create the semblance of revolution. Only insurrection can guarantee the victory of the revolution. The purpose of insurrection must be not only the complete destruction or removal of all local authorities and the replacement by new, but also the expulsion of the landlords and the seizure of their lands. Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist forces had long easily recognized, for it consists